Yes, let's get started. Um, hello and welcome everyone to this session. My name is Thomas Seidel, um, Drunk Monkey on Triple.org. And you're all hopefully here to um, hear a quick overview of the Search API module and see me do a live demo of how to set it up on a um, new installation. Um, so a quick warning, 40 minutes is pretty uh, short for this talk. So uh, I'll, I'll um, try to speed it up and maybe talk a little bit faster and all, drop all the good jokes. And yeah, if you have questions afterwards, either just watch the video online again or um, come find me and I'll be sure to answer any questions you have. So a quick overview of the module. So the Search API is a contract module I de uh, developed in 2010 uh, for Drupal 7, Drupal 8 and it's made to be a replacement for the core search module. So it um, gives you co complete search functionality, just much more powerful and flexible than the um, core search module, but uh, powerful and flexible as usual means also more complex, which is why I'm standing here and telling you how to set it up because it's a bit hard to figure out for uh, newcomers. But yeah, with the search API, you can use different dedicated search backends like Solar or Elasticsearch as well as the normal database for searching and comes with a great views integration so you can use the normal uh, views tools most of you will be familiar with I guess um, to set up your search. <laughs> Internal structure is um, it consists of two uh, config entity types you'll usually for simple sites just have one of each. A search index um, defines the kind of items you want to index and search like content or media or user profiles which fields you want to index, uh, how this should be processed, and all of that is completely backend independent. And then the server gives you the definition of how this will be, uh, really where this data will be stored and retrieved during searches. So this is the backend dependent part, which connects to the database or uh, Solar or Elasticsearch. And the idea is that all other modules all other features that are built on top of Search API then just reference the index. So if you let the switch out the back end, then um, things will start just keep uh, working the same with the new back end. So uh, with that out of the way, let's uh, begin. Um, can everyone see that okay? I hope it's, uh, yeah, I hope it's uh, large enough. So uh, we begin, of course, by installing the Search API module. Um, yeah, and uh, along with the Search API module, we'll also need to install uh, one module that provides a search backend for a server. So for this, we have the um, option of using the um, the database search backend, which comes with the Search API project, or the Solar module, which will uh, which I'll show you later, uh, or some other backend modules in Contrib. And there's also the database search defaults module that gives you a, um, a ready-made uh, installation based on the standard profile of Search API. So that then you can, if you have the standard profile, then you can get uh, up and running right away and then just customize that. But of course, that would be a bit um, boring for this talk, so we'll uh, not use that here. Also with Umami, of course, it won't work. As I said, you need the standard profile. And once we have uh, the module enabled, we get, go to its um, configuration page. Um, I don't know if uh, who of you was already at Nick Wienhoff's uh, talk on Monday. Okay, not a lot. Okay, then that's great because he actually talked about some of the same topics, and it would be kind of boring. Um, but yeah, uh, we go to the configuration page, bookmark it for late reference, and first we add a server, so then we can later already add the index right to it. As I said, it will be a database server, so we just call it the database server. Um, everything else can be the default, minimum word length is usually, a, three is a good default value for that, and that already gave us the search server, so that's very, very simple. The index is a bit more complicated and has uh, more options. So uh, we first need to um, decide what we actually want to index. And for this uh, demo, we'll just uh, index normal content entities. 
but as uh, you can see here, all other content entity types are also um, available for indexing, and contrib modules can add even more of those. So, um, uh, yeah, these these options can all stay um, can all stay as, uh, as they are. We just want to select the database server as the uh, search server. And in the index options, I need to quickly talk about the index items immediately um, option because what that does, normally um, items are indexed during cron runs. So when a node gets changed, it just gets marked as dirty in an internal table. And then during cron runs, all those uh, dirty items will be indexed on the search server and only then will they, be, uh, will they appear in search results. And as this option already describes in its uh, label, this causes the items to instead be indexed right away after they get changed. So when a new node gets created or an ed edited node gets saved, it will be added to the search server immediately, which of course has lots of benefits. Um, users which may um, maybe you're using on your site the search API also for normal listings of content. And when a user, a visitor creates a node, if they are able to do that and then don't see it in a the list, they'll wonder what happened. So this can surely prevent some head scratching. Also, if you're using the um, index data for search access, uh, for uh, access checks, um, disabling this option could be a security risk because then if you unpublish a node and it should not be in the search results anymore, um, the changed uh, published field won't get indexed after, uh, until the next cron run, so the node might still appear in search results until then. Therefore, it's, uh, it could be important to have this, uh, this option on. The downside is that for especially for um, dedicated search backends like Solar or Elasticsearch, they are very happy to just receive uh, 500 uh, items with hey, index those, but are very unhappy if you ping them with a new item every 10 seconds. So um, the indexing performance and searching performance will go down for larger sites with a lot of um, frequent changes if you're using this uh, option. But my uh, recommendation is to always keep this enabled for small sites and only for larger sites, investigate if changing this makes sense for your site and uh, yeah, make sure you don't have a security problem that way. For our small site, of course, uh, keeping, this, uh, keeping this is fine. So now that we have added the basic index, we can configure which fields uh, the index should use. One uh, great field to have here is the red HTML, HTML output, which will basically just include everything a user sees on the page in the search index which is, uh, in a lot of cases, of course, exactly what you want. If you just have a um, dedicated view mode for that, uh, I pre-configured um, search index for that, um, because you don't, of course, want to have field labels or edit links or share links or something else, uh, something like that in the search index, because that would be pointless and mod just muddy the search results. Um, then we just add other fields that we want to search or filter on later, maybe. Um, body we don't need because it's of course already part of the rendered HTML output, but content type could be um, could be nice for filtering, and yeah, just just add uh, just add uh, fields that make sense. Basically, of course, normally you would um, for first create the index, maybe add some full text uh, fields, and later then just uh, think about which. Um, which other fields you need for filtering or sorting and then going back and adding those. Um, so yeah, okay, I seem to have added text twice. I hope I didn't forget anything in turn. Um, now the only thing, we in did index title because that's A, normally not part of the render HTML output and B, we um, want to be able to boost this field which basically says that um, the title or words in the title are eight times more important than a text in normal body versus in normal body. So um, that items containing a search key keyword in their title will be ranked uh, further up. So uh, we save this fields, this fields page and then we get the warning or message that we need to re-index or in our case index for the first time uh, so the settings can take effect. But first we uh, want to look at, why is the autocomplete tab there? Um, okay. Uh, did I enable autocomplete by accident for, for before? Yes, did anyone pay attention? Yes, okay, good. Um, well, that, that makes sense. I didn't mean to, but 
Anyways, processors. <clears throat> so, uh, what are processors? They are a type of plugin uh, configured in the index, and uh, they can really do lots of different things, which is why they have such a generic name as processors. They can um, change the index data, um, add new fields, transform uh, search queries or search results, and there are countless of them, uh, some provided by Search API itself, and some in contract modules. And yeah, for example, ones that are co uh, contained in the Search API itself, um, are the uh, one that makes searches case insensitive, which is of course something you almost always want, uh, provide highlighting for search results, or add access checks as I mentioned earlier, so um, automated content access on the search results. Normally, um, access checks can't be provided generically by the search API, so if you define an index on something other than nodes or comments, then um, adding or making sure not nobody can see stuff they aren't supposed to see is um, well is your your uh, um, concern because it's not just not possible to do this um, generically in Drupal unfortunately but for for content and comments there is the ready-made processor that does it for you uh, what you in any case should um, keep in mind is that some of these processes can cause problem with um, dedicated backends like Solar or Elasticsearch because they already have um, their own uh, internal way of making searches, ignore case, and provide stemming and tokenizing and whatever. And so they are they just get a lot of uh, they just get confused if you already do that on the search API side, and then things won't start work, uh, won't work properly, and I get unnecessary bug reports. So um, yeah, just make sure to uh, keep that in mind when using a dedicated search engine. But for a database backend. Um, most of these make sense. We want uh, automated content access, we want highlighting, we want the HTML field to do not um, index HTML tags, we want to ignore case. Um, stemming and tokenizing are also st standard uh, search features. If you're not sure what to do, uh, check Wikipedia. Um, uh, the normal process settings are largely fine, just for the HTML filter we need to disable it or should very much disable it for those fields that actually don't contain any HTML because yeah, it doesn't make any sense for them. Uh, so uh, we just save these settings now and now it's finally time to re-index actually. For that we could wait for a cron run or just uh, go to the view tab, click index now and great, uh, we now have a working search setup, just no way for the visitor or actually us um, to search. So we'll use the uh, Fuse integration which I mentioned earlier. Just create, a, who here never has used Fuse before? Okay, um, just making sure. I mean, I wouldn't have explained it really, but yeah, just making sure. So uh, we call it search, the um, type here, to use is index content index. So index and then the name we formally used. Then we realize um, something is not working with caching. Um, then we create the page. Um, so I just cleared cache if, if uh, you're wondering. Um, we want to use a pager, create a menu link in main navigation maybe. And then save and edit the view. And then you get the normal um, normal views, uh, views UI, we can here change to have a rendered entity with a, a search result view mode I set up earlier. Uh, we could also add the search excerpt, excerpt um, as a field, but uh, yeah, I don't have time for that right now. So um, now we look at the results and see, yeah, we already have um, search results there unfiltered at the moment and uh, as you see we have also uh, the same result twice, once in English and once in Spanish. Uh, so the first thing we should do is of course add a filter for language. Um, so when you add a filter you have all the indexed uh, fields on the index available as filters. Um, but for now we just want one on the item language which is always present, you don't have to index that um, specifically. And one on full text search, which gives you a normal uh, search keywords field like you'd expect in any full text search. The item language to, of course, just uh, correspond to the uh, language selected for the page. We could also expose the filter if you wanted to, but uh, let's not do that now. And full text search, of course, 
largely only makes sense when exposed. Um, we could make it required if we don't want people to be able to get an um, unfiltered listing without any keywords, but sometimes um, allowing that is, is what you want to do, and yeah, we want that in this case. Uh, we'll use a placeholder because it looks nicer, and for the, the final setting we'll change is um, the minimum keyword length, which should correspond to the one you have picked on the search server, and also on the tokenizer um, plugin, which also has a standard um, keyword length of three. three. So um, yeah, <coughs> this just gives the user a UI warning if they um, enter two uh, short keywords. Then uh, we could also add uh, sorting. For, uh, by default, um, sorting is done by relevance, so the most relevant <coughs> items get uh, shown first. Um, we want that too, but uh, if the user doesn't add any keywords, then there is no relevance. The relevance for all items is, is the same one usually. And so we want to have a, a backup sort in this case, and we sort by the creation date uh, for this case. Both of those, of course, descending, used items first and most relevant first. And then uh, put the relevance above, so it's the one that gets uh, used if there is any relevance. So what more to do, we could add headers, no results behavior. Um, yeah, maybe let's, let's add a re result summary header at least. And uh, since we of course want, or of course, but we, we do want a search box on every page of the site, we expose the form in a block. And yeah, and we deactivate caching. Uh, first of all, these two don't actually work with the search API, only um, these two do work some uh, in some sense, but uh, using none is, you should, you should um, evaluate for yourself if um, using one of these uh, cache, caching strategies does make sense for your site. Um, we save the view, and now we just need to enable the exposed block. We uh, the exposed form block. We add this to the pre uh, pre header um, region. Uh, we don't want to display the title. Yeah, that's like you would do for no any normal view too. Save blocks, and now we go back to the site, and we should have a search block right here. Yeah, and there it is. So when we now um, search for something, we'll get the results page as we expected, hopefully, um, with yeah, just cooking results. Um, and as you can see, if we switch to Espanol, um, sorry if I don't pronounce it, no, <laughs> oh, of course, no, cooking, cooking won't. Um, won't appear in any Spanish content, uh, okay? Um, but if we just uh, use the unfiltered search, we'll get 18 results, so exactly all of the, um, yeah, Spanish content. So, um, let's see, if we now um, want to find special information about cooking vegetables, let's say. Oh, uh, back to English, sorry. Um, okay, we get two results, so we use a phrase search, that should mean um, that exactly those two words appear in this order, right one after the other in the content. But watercress soup, um, let's check that out. And yeah, um, the, this is not actually uh, found in this uh, item. If you go, go down to the other one, let's see there, yeah. Cooking vegetables is a part of the second item, but not of the first. So what's the problem here? Anyone knows? Uh, well, the database uh, backend, rhetoric question, sorry, um, is uh, currently not capable of doing phrase queries. It will accept them, so the, um, the uh, quotation marks are ignored, but it will just find any item that has both the words cooking and vegetables, or cook and vegetable, or um, yeah. So uh, if we want phrase searches or faster searches or better uh, matching behavior or just have lots more items, then we should uh, switch to, uh, to Solar. So Apache Solar. 
Um, if you don't know it, Apache Solo is an open source search engine. So it's dedicated software that uh, implements a search server for you. Um, and this really has all the search features you could ever imagine or want, more or less. And, hmm? and uh, it can deal with a, a, almost any amount of documents. So it's happy to take 50 million as well. So once the database um, grows to small, switch to solar and it shouldn't have any problems if properly set up. Um, now some of you might wonder what about Elasticsearch, what about Sapien or um, other search backends which are also great. Um, I'm not saying Apache Solar is um, better than any of these, um, but what's true in any case is that the Drupal integration is far more mature and superior to the others as far as I have seen. And historically, um, Apache Solar has always been a go-to solution for a Drupal sites since I don't know Drupal 4. So it's just, um, it's just a lot more support supported and better integrated. So I usually just have suggest using this, even though, for example, Elasticsearch, uh, I like very much personally, but it's just not um, properly integrated with the Search API at this moment. Um, how to set up Solar? First of all, there is the option of just uh, paying someone to do it for you. There are web posters which um, provide Solar service for you. You can just use one of them, or you can set, up lo set it up locally, uh, which I'll show you in a moment. Easy to evaluate it or um, even on your own server if you have uh, the knowledge to do so. Either way, um, but especially if you set it up yourself, do not forget security. By default, the ser uh, solar service is just um, accessible to everyone. Everyone who guesses the right URL can just go to the ser server, read all the items, index their own, delete items, do whatever they like. So definitely do not, um, do not uh, neglect uh, securing the server. Uh, I've seen production servers where just you needed to um, put in the standard solar port and slash solar and you were in, and this is really, really, really bad. So, um, yeah, but I'll just do a basic local setup without uh, security. You'll have to research yourself some options to um, add security to a solar server. So, um, yeah, doing that. First of all, let's start our solar server. I've already um, downloaded the package. Um, and of course, um, verified it with the PGP signature. I'm a yeah, nice guy. Uh, extract it here. Um, open the terminal. And then just uh, execute this command. Bin directory solar command start. And after a few seconds, um, you already have solar running on your uh, server. A few more seconds, maybe. Um, yeah, and that's it. Uh, solar is running. Now we need a um, core, a solar core, which is a dedicated solar index for our site. For that, we get go to uh, server solar and create a new um, directory for our for our uh, site. You can call it any, anything, I'll call it demo, and then we need a conf directory which needs to be named like this inside of there. And so, so now we need uh, configuration files for Solar, and if uh, someone has done this previously, a few years ago maybe, then they will say, oh, 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 I know this one. You go to the search by Solar module, there's a folder there, and you just copy over the configuration files. And that used to be the way to do it, um, but now actually Solar, the Solar module comes with a configuration builder, which will build a uh, um, configuration based on your own configuration. So you can set up your own field types, and it will uh, most importantly recognize which, which languages are enabled on your site and include all the language specific configuration. So that's uh, really, great, uh, really great to have. Um, so let's uh, see that in action. First of all, uh, we again, have to enable the module, of course. Um, there's also a defaults module. Once again, if you, if you want to um, quickly test it out with a, a standard installation. Um, yeah, now we go to the uh, search by uh, administration overview, add a new server. We call this uh, unimaginatively solar server. Um, but choose solar as the backend, of course. And then there's uh, 
well, standard solar connector is fine for us. Um, yeah, if you don't know what the others are, just don't use them. Standard is fine for now. Basic auth might be a way to um, get uh, proper security um, restrictions. And for the other options, they can all stay the sa uh, same, except we need to input our um, core name we chose earlier here into the solar core field. And save the server. Now it says the so server could be reached, but the core could not be accessed because, um, well, we haven't made it yet, we need the config files, and we can get those just uh, by clicking here, open with, and you see there are files for both English and Spanish here. Um, we extract all of those. into the um, folder I just made, server, solar, demo, conf. And now when we go back to the uh, folder view, we see the um, yeah, files we extract properly. So what we just now need to do is to tell solar about the new core. So um, we can just click this link and it takes us to the solar um, uh, solar admin panel, at least if you haven't secured it anyway, that would prevent that. Um, then we go to core admin. If there aren't any cores, it already gives us uh, the new core uh, form. Otherwise, we need to press add core, but yeah, not, not that hard to figure out. And with this, we already have our core up and running. All right. Um, now, if you refresh, we see the core could be accessed. There aren't any items on it yet, but it has the right schema. And uh, yeah, it already works. We just need to add the content index to this server. Um, right, sorry. Uh, solar server, save, then re index. And the content is all on the um, on the solar server now. And when we re-execute the search, hmm, okay, the search content is definitely there, but uh, cooking vegetables isn't found. Who knows why? Who paid attention? No one. Okay. Ah, yeah. You have the filters already set up, so it gets confused. Exactly, yeah, the process is set up still for the database index, and it gets confused. Very well done. <laughs> uh, okay, we go to processors, and once we're there, we already see a big bold warning. It is recommended not to use this processor with the selected server. So let's just follow these, uh, these hints, disable the three processors that have this warning, um, and for the HTML filter, something that mm, isn't explicitly said, but tag boosts don't make any sense for that, as far as I know. Um, so better just uh, disable those, but uh, they sh also shouldn't do any harm. So remixing now. We have all day, no <coughs> hurry. This is of course the great thing about live demos, everything that goes always wrong. So uh, if I can do it, you can do it definitely. If, um, if it works well enough in a live demo, nothing can go wrong for you um, at home. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I think you maybe forgot some checkboxes to take because I think it was not just to Hmm? There were some checkboxes I think you forgot to take. No, they don't, they don't have any warnings. Content access, highlight, HTML filter. They are, they are all fine and the others, they don't have any warnings. So, um, no, it's fine this way and indexing finally worked. Don't know what the holdup was. And now, yeah, back to the search. You see we have this one article which does have cooking vegetables and we don't have the other anymore. So this. Uh, yeah, this now works, so uh, solar upgrade complete. And actually I was much faster than during uh, practice, so we might have uh, the chance to look at one more uh, module if you want, or maybe go deeper into an existing one. 
So um, other extension modules are available, available as I said. Um, two of the most popular ones are facets, which, which gives you a faceted search, and the autocomplete module, which gives you, well, autocomplete, and yeah, several other modules and uh, yeah. There is now, if um, some of you might not be aware, a project that extend this link on uh, project pages or on some project pages at least. So if you get a search it by a project page, this link will take you to a complete list of all the modules that extend the search API in some way or integrate with it and uh, didn't forget to put in this information. Uh, so I now want to talk about the fastest module unless uh, we have a clear majority for autocomplete. Autocomplete? Auto Who's? Okay, facets. 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 facets, facets, yeah, I, I, I thought so. Overruled. <laughs> Overruled. Uh, everyone who wants to see location out of the room. Um, I'll go to, to talk to Matthias, where is he? Uh, sorry, um, good. Ah, okay, I did, I did enable autocomplete already, but sorry, still no. Um, let's, let's enable the facets module. So, we install that. Um, our range widget might also have been a nice idea, but probably no time for that. Um, go to the search API, then uh, no, on the, to the search and metadata section. And there we can add facets again for all the fields we have indexed. We have to pick the um, search in question, so it's uh, this view search we set up in this case. And the field we want to filter on, uh, content type is of course, uh, well, a very classic example, just being able to filter by whether there's an article page, a basic page, or a rece uh, recipe um, that matches. I want to see a list of links, and there's now an endless, an endless list of uh, options and processes which you could enable. You can read through all of them if you want sometime, but um, not right now. We just want to transform the entity ID to label because the content type field contains um, references to content type entities, so we need that to have the I label properly displayed. It's a list item label. Hmm? It's a list item label, I think. No, it's maybe both work, but okay. I practiced. Uh, <laughs> chill, chill. <laughs> it's, it's, it's fine. Okay, um, let's use the end operator for this one, so we can only pick one of the um, content types. And yeah, the rest should be fine. So let's just save this, and uh, maybe add another facet on, uh, let's see what we have. Maybe um, tags, yeah, tags is also of course a very, uh, a very classic example of facets. For this, we m might want to use checkboxes instead so that we can um, filter by more than one facet, uh, or at least that it's also um, representing the UI that way. Maybe set a soft limit for that so it doesn't show us all the countless uh, tags right away. Um, for this, we also want to transform the entity ID to a label. Um, tags in this case are not a hierarchic um, taxonomy, so the hierarchical features don't make sense. Um, but yeah, everything else should be fine like this. Hard limit might be a good idea if there really are thousands of assets uh, of <coughs> tags, but um, in our case it's not that many, so no hard limit is also fine. We save this, and lastly I want to add a facet on the difficulty field which is only present on, um, on recipes. <coughs> and so for this it makes sense to, um, to show this uh, facet only if the user first clicked the recipe uh, content type facet. So the way to do this is very simple. You just go, go, uh, go to dependent facet, enable a condition for content type, check whether the facet is set to specific values, Makes sense. And now we enter the machine name of the um, content type. Okay, maybe not that simple, but it's, 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 um, yeah. Yeah, simple enough. Let's say it like that. And for this, we use list item label because um, the <laughs> difficulty field is not a taxonomy term uh, reference, it's just an option list with uh, three, three um, possible options. Um, and the rest is fine again. 
So let's save this. Now we just need to um, add this to the to the side. We add the fastest to the sidebar. Um, all right, we can't filter by category, unfortunately. That would have been easier. But um, yeah, we all we want that like that. Um, the difficulty too and text was the last one. I hope I'm not forgetting some setting here, but um, but of course you could, um, if you want, restrict the uh, restrict the blocks to only be so shown on the search page. But if no search query is present, then they won't appear anyway. So um, so it's not necessary to do that. Good. Um, yeah. That's it. Do I need to save this? Uh, let's be sure. Um, going back to the site. Okay, cooking vegetables is, an, is a boring example, but if we now go to uh, the unfiltered search with no keywords, we now see there's the content type facet, there's the text facet with checkboxes. The checkboxes aren't zoomed, so they are not as, as well uh, visible as the rest. And when we click more, we get the whole list of uh, tags. We might have wanted to order them by uh, alphabetically instead of by account, but yeah, whatever works. And if we click on recipe, then we just see the nine um, recipe results and the difficulty facet now also appears. And yeah, that's a basic facet setup. And we have three minutes left. So <laughs> no autocomplete, sorry, but um, yeah, are there any questions? Hmm? Eight minutes. Eight minutes? I thought 40 minute session. Autocomplete. <laughs> <laughs> yay! All right, autocomplete, yay! 45 minutes. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with improvising. So, this is really much quicker than doing practice. It's amazing every time. Okay, so, uh, right, I should talk while doing this. So first you enable the search by autocomplete module. This is clear. You go to the indexes autocomplete tab. Also pretty obvious once you see the tab is there. Then you have to enable autocomplete for any search where you want it. We currently only have one search view uh, <coughs> named search. So um, we enable it for that. And then we can edit it. We can display live results, so when the user starts typing, they get uh, the result um, in real time once, the, once they type. Um, though that only really works well with part partial matching, which we don't have set up at the moment. Uh, but once the user completes a word, then they'll get the results right away. And then there's uh, several uh, types that for the rest of the four suggestors really also retrieve the, uh, only retrieve the suggestions from the solar server. And um, so one uses spell checking, so if you mistype something, it tries to find the correct uh, word. And the others, um, yeah, they are, let's just use solar terms for now, I think. Um, that, should, that should give us the, um, the best results in our case. Um, and we just want to display three live results and then up to three, uh, up to three solar terms. We can now also dis uh, configure the suggested displays. We could just search in the title, for example, and we can uh, choose which view mode should be used for um, displaying the, um, the results in this uh, autocomplete pop-up. But if you don't have one configured, then of course none of this makes sense because you don't want to have a whole teaser or anything in the um, in the autocomplete pop-up, and solar terms also just let's just choose the um, fields that should be used. In, uh, if you properly set this up, then you might want to have an additional field that just contains terms for autocompletion, so um, the results will look nicer than um, with uh, stamped terms. Um, but for demonstration purposes, it should be fine like this. We want this for all of the um, views displays. Um, I want to complete right away. And yeah, let's display result count estimates. 
two. So um, the user can already see how many um, how many items um, approximately will be returned by a certain search. So going back to the site, when we now go to the enter keywords, you see there's already this autocomplete ring. And if you start typing, then we get suggested terms. And if we complete a word, then we already get a live result. So these two are ones that would contain pasta. These three contain past or some variation of that, that um, etc. And if we pick one of those, we go directly to the node in question. And if we pick one of the suggestions, then we go to a search uh, field with that suggestion. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, then we can already uh, set up the search index a bit more properly for the uh, live results, which is also pretty simple with Solar, um, if you know how to do that. <laughs> so um, first of all, we want to add a new field, um, which is again just a rendered HTML output um, with search results, basically a clone of the existing one. But this time uh, we are going to use a different um, field type, namely one that is uh, better suited for um, for uh, um, displaying live results because it will already um, deliver results if you have uh, incomplete keywords. So, um, hmm. should pick some label for that so they don't that they don't confuse that those two. And save the changes. Um, we can then re index. What we also want to do is um, go to the search view and make sure that the search view doesn't, um, doesn't actually use this new field for its own search. Um, unless, of course, we want that, but um, let's, uh, let's say for now that we just want uh, complete words in the search, in the normal search. Um, on the normal search page, but to be able to uh, deliver live results. Um, so we go to the full text search filter, and the, uh, down here we have the option to restrict the search um, searched fields. So we just pick um, the two original ones and leave uh, the autocomplete field out of it. Um, save that. And then, of course, we need to set up uh, autocomplete to actually use this field. Might have done it first. Um, yeah, for this for the display live results, um, we just want to use this uh, rendered item one uh, field. And for the uh, solar terms, it will already use what the search is using, so it should not use this um, rendered item one field. Um, if you want to go sure, you, uh, if, you want, if you want to make sure, you can also just um, check these two fields here. Save again, and hopefully now we get a better uh, display live results autocomplete. So let's try it out. Yeah, and now just when you type uh, two, even just two um, letters, you already get uh, three live results with. Um, yeah, results starting with those letters. And now I think we are really done with the session. Um, so yeah, uh, one thing I should of course also point out that tomorrow we'll be at the contribution sprint. We already have a table reserved for the whole week where we'll try to make the search a bit better. So if you have questions, suggestions, or want to help out, uh, trial patches, write patches, review, whatever, then please come by and help us uh, get there or just come come there in general and help other modules or core um, improve. And also please remember that you can rate this session and the whole Drupal account give feedback and hopefully help us all improve. So um, yeah. Thanks everyone for attending and have a nice day. And please meet me outside if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them there.